Bill, are we live? We're live here. We're live here. Hello, guys. Welcome to Real Simple Cooking School. It's right around one. Right around one. I am your host and teacher, Dawn, food director here at Real Simple. Today, we are talking about five ingredient dinner. In our October issue, it says cozy on it. We have an amazing feature of all five ingredient recipes. However, here, let me find one for you. Oh my gosh, I can't find it. Five ingredient recipes, Qu uh, quick disclaimer, olive oil, salt, pepper, they don't count. Why? Because you have them, requires no shopping. Okay, here is five ingredient, it's gorgeous by Grace Elkis, our good friend. Now, here's a secret. Buried back in the dinner section, you know, we always have these easy dinners in here, is this chicken pesto flatbread sandwiches um, that our friend Emily developed. Looks like more than five ingredients. I am going to show you how to turn it into a five ingredient meal. A couple of shortcuts. So we're gonna make these. Um, before we go any further, let's quickly review the rules. Um, one, we wash our hands. I'm actually gonna do that. And two, we play nice. This is a constructive teaching kitchen and I aim to keep it that way. If you don't have anything nice to say, you are now dismissed. So long, let's play. Okay, gonna wash my hands real quick. Um, I think that these five ingredient dinners are, they're, they're a good challenge for us as the recipe developers, but they're also kind of a good game to play with yourself. So when you're looking at recipes, I want you guys to start thinking like, can I streamline this in, in one way? You know, we are, are tasked with keeping things interesting and keeping things new feeling, um, which often means like making something from scratch even though you can buy it, vice versa. So in this case, you'll see, just gonna give you a quick rundown of how this works. The first few ingredients we've got, basil, parsley, garlic, pepper, olive oil, I know, like, huh, looks like they're gonna make some kind of pesto. So instead of those four ingredients, we just bought pesto, okay? Now, if you have these things laying around, awesome. Make your own pesto. If you've got the time, do it. If you're like, this looks really good, I don't necessarily have the time, buy some pesto, okay? Other shortcut we're using today is prepared pizza dough. As Jerry, our friend, um, and video producer mentioned, he's like, is store-bought pizza dough any good? I say yes. It definitely depends on the pizza dough. This, uh, this brand, it's also regional. So this brand, we get it from Whole Foods here, um, behaves beautifully. I do think it needs like a little bit of salt. That's just something you're going to find when you use it, um, but we're going to season it before we use it today. So I'll show you how that works. Okay. Um, we're gonna do a pretty cool technique here. So these are called, we call them in the magazine, chicken pesto flatbread sandwiches. These are inspired by a thing called piadina, which are like a thin crust pizza dough sandwich um, in Italy. So basically we're gonna just bake off these pizza dough rounds, steam them briefly so they're easy to fold, and then stuff them with some easy stuff. Sound good? Good, good, good. Okay, great. Any questions, Jerry, before we get going? Substitute for pesto if you get acid reflux. Um, is it the garlic? I think it's the garlic. The garlic, okay. Um, yes, you could definitely use tomato sauce, although that might also give you acid reflux. Basically, you just want to use something wet and moist. We're putting chicken, arugula, and mozzarella in this. Um, if those sauces aren't great, even just toss tossing the ingredients in a generous amount of olive oil, salt and pepper, that could help, but like a little bit of acid is gonna go a long way. So you could also use the whole leaves, whole parsley leaves and basil, which will give you more flavor. Okay, any other questions, Jerry, before we get going? No. Okay, so just to review, this is my store about pizza dough. One of the most important things you can do to uh, up your rate of success when using store about pizza dough is bring it to room temperature. You see this bubble here? This is a good thing. So if you go to work with your pizza dough and it bounces back and it's like feeling really tough, um, give it 15 to 30 minutes at room temp, it's gonna become much more pliable, much more relaxed and easier to work with. So 
for these guys, we want to divide the dough in, uh, in, we're going to quarter it. So divide it into four. And this is like about a pound, um, más o menos. So divide it into four. And then we're just going to roll it or stretch it, use your hands kind of whatever you find is easier, um, into oval. So I'm actually going to scooch over here. Is that okay for you, Phil and Tessa? Okay, on a lightly floured surface. We're gonna, we'll go rolling pin today, but this is one of my other favorite things is how to dust uh, a surface. You don't do this, too much flour, okay? What you wanna do, it's almost like you're skimming a stone, skimming rocks, see? It's like a, it's like a, a shake and release. Pretty good, nice even coating, um, and you're not gonna get big clumps of flour stuck to your dough. Okay, so this is very nice. I'm getting some bubbles, I'm getting some air to come out. That means my pizza dough is pretty much perfect. So I like to just stretch it to get it started. But we're going for like four, six inch diameter-ish. Um, and I did, I did this earlier with another pound of dough just in case this wasn't the right temp. But this, is pro this pizza dough's probably been out for like an hour. So I would say if you buy your pizza dough on the way home from work, just leave it out um, or pull it out of the fridge as soon as you get home and then like, you know, go to the bathroom, change your pants, like put the dog, whatever, do like a few things and then get going. Any questions? Pizza dough, five ingredients. What I had for breakfast. Yes. How long can you make Looks good. Looks good. Happy to be here. Great, guys. Good to see you. Okay. so. Look at this, this is gonna be great. So let's roll these out. Again, if you lightly dust um, my rolling pin, you could keep going and just pressing. Da, 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 da. I find this technique more helpful if I'm like topping it like a pizza, because then I can focus on getting that traditional pizza rim. Um, but we want these to be fairly flat across, so I'm just gonna do this. And I'm pressing some of that air out, that's okay because again, we're gonna fold these over. So, oh, I should have reflowered. No big deal. Pulls right off. Another shortcut we've got here, rotisserie chicken, one of my faves. This recipe calls specifically for two cups of shredded rotisserie chicken. That's just because we're being smart about it and it's already cooked. If you have leftover chicken, by all means use that. If you wanted to just like cook off a couple chicken breasts because you had those laying around, that's totally fine. Um, you could also skip the chicken um, and just use the cheese and maybe stuff some tomato in there as well. Also yum delish. Okay, now let's get these all ready and then I'm gonna show you this kind of key moment. I have in the oven a sheet tray regular old sheet tray. It looks, you know, our same standard guy. My oven's on 400 and that's been in there 15 minutes or so. So what that hot sheet pan does is sort of mimic those deck pizza ovens. You guys have seen those at the pizza place. Um, and it just means there's nice even heat all the way across. Sort of like the cast iron, it kind of gets hot and stays evenly hot. So that's what we're going for. Also, as soon as the dough hits that hot surface, it's gonna to start to cook immediately, which is gonna help you get that crisp crust and nice rise. So you can see these don't have to be perfect. If I had kind of like given it a little more time, we could get more circle shapes, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so these are ready. I am going to drizzle these with a little bit of olive oil. Again, more flavor and it's gonna help it not stick. So this is actually gonna be the side that I put down on the sheet tray. Does that make sense? And that's gonna get super yum. So because I know this, this is gonna be, we can use this one. This will just be my olive oil uh, towel. I know this needs a little bit of salt, but this always kind of helps. A little bit of salt and why not pepper? It's right here. That's sort of personal choice. Some people don't like the black flecks. I have one friend who's like never peppers her turkey because she doesn't want to see black flecks. Okay, now dry towel or oven mitt. I'm gonna pull my hot tray out. Now, here's another trick I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna do it over here because I think this can handle the heat. You guys see okay? 
I'm gonna go rim down. I just, it gives me a little more surface area so I don't run into that edge. Okay, and then very carefully, gingerly. You hear it? It's very quiet in here, so I think you need to get. Okay, one, two, I think we can fit these all here. I'm not gonna pull them too much. And then as soon as they get on there, a little close, but I think we'll be okay. I'm gonna give them a little more olive oil. Olive oil, olive oil, olive oil. You can use a brush if you're nervous, but this isn't gonna be too hot yet. And then these just bake until they're like golden brown and risen, like regular bread stuff. Um, should take about like 12 minutes. And you guys will see how fast this goes. I'm probably gonna have some time to kill. Okay, remember this thing is hot, so I'll use my other towel too. Back in the oven. And there you go. Set the timer. 12 men. Any questions? Yes, sorry, I had like a whole, a whole storyline in my head. Guys, Brooke usually do, does the question, <laughs> answers your questions. She's out today, Jerry, manning the questions over there. Say hi to Jerry. Um, drop in the questions as, as you have them. So, we're making these chicken pesto flatbread sandwiches. We've got our pizza dough rounds in the oven. Um, they're gonna bake for like 12 minutes until golden brown and beautiful. Phil's going no hands now, wow. Let's talk about the filling. So these have some cooked chicken, we're gonna use rotisserie, some arugula, you could use spinach if you wanted, um, and some fresh mozzarella. Again, you could skip the chicken, add some tomato, um, you could skip the pesto, add a little marinara sauce. Jerry asked earlier, is this just an open-ended calzone? Kind of, <laughs> except the feeling's not gonna be hot, it's gonna be like room temp. But, um, you could definitely take it in that direction, put some sliced pepperoni in there, whatever you think. Now, this calls for two cups of shredded rotisserie chicken. I'm not even gonna measure it, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, that's, you know, depending on your hands, there's probably like four good handfuls, thinking that each handful is about a half a cup. <coughs> And that's about it. Rotisserie chickens, again, a great shortcut. Um, it's just sometimes nice to have like cooked protein around. Another good option if you didn't want to do rotisserie chicken is tuna or like another tinned fish. Um, trending right now, but really convenient. Um, they also like add big flavor to whatever you're cooking. Um, it's sort of you know, in the vein of, of box stock, something like that. Um, any other questions? I wanna hear about your other five ingredient meals, some of the shortcut stuff that you guys make at home. Let me know. Pantry ingredients you keep on hand for this kind of thing. Anything, anything, anything? Quiet day, guys. It's quiet in here, it's quiet out there. Okay, so I'm gonna say, yeah, that's like, half cup, three quarter cup. And I'm not doing anything special when I'm tearing this. I just want it to be bite-sized pieces so I don't have any like awkward chicken hanging out of my mouth moments when I'm eating this, which I will hopefully do by the end of this program. Oh, you know what I didn't talk about? This bench scraper. You guys see this thing? I'm not gonna touch it because now I have chicken hands. See this? That's a bench scraper. It is my preferred way to work with pizza dough. You can, of course, use a chef's knife, but pizza dough, because it doesn't, I mean, bench scraper, because it doesn't have that super sharp edge, <clears throat> I just find it, it cuts through everything really easily. Um, it doesn't, the dough generally doesn't stick to it, offers you more precision, and then you don't have to get out your knife if you don't want to. I haven't even touched that knife yet, have I? Except to open the package. We've been talking a lot about knives today and sort of like the essential knives that you need to keep on hand. Why not review while I do this uh, chicken picking? So chef's knife like that one right there. A paring knife for your detail work. So that means like the only example we kept thinking of today was 
culling strawberries, which is kind of narrow, but um, any of your detail work. So trimming garlic, um, trimming mushrooms, segmenting citrus, that kind of thing. Um, I like to think of a paring knife as anything I would do like above the board, like in the air. Um, chef's knife, you're gonna chop and slice, you're gonna use that the most. And then your serrated knife for bread and other really tender things like tomatoes. I think maybe a little more. So two cups I would say is almost the whole rotisserie chicken. I mean, we, I used one leg, no, both legs and both breasts, give or take. So I've got a couple thighs left over, so you could probably get one more uh, chicken moment out of this bird. But I think depending on how many people you're feeding, um, you can get one to two meals out of a rotisserie chicken. Tessa has a question. What are bees in the skin? Oh, good question. Um, I just don't feel like using it today. You can definitely use the skin. Um, this one has more of like a barbecue flavoring just because that's what was available. So does it totally go with my Piadina situation? So use the skin by all means if you like. And if you don't like, skip it. Opinions, they count in the kitchen. Okay, I'm starting to smell that pizza dough. I'm gonna take a look. Whoa, looking really good, Phil, can you see? Tessa, can you see? We're getting some nice air. Some nice bubbles. I'm just gonna keep that going. <clears throat> Remember how I said we were going for ovals? Eh, who cares? They're more like triangles. Okay, now let's talk about the filling. So you've got our chicken ready to go. Now, arugula. Arugula is one of my faves because one, tender, the wild arugula also, it's cute, small. Um, big flavor for a relatively tender green. I feel like your other tender greens, especially like baby spinach, kind of just filler. It doesn't pack a lot of flavor. So arugula is often my choice when you're just like, eh, I kind of need some greens. Like what can I use? Raw, throw arugula in there. So again, this has a measurement. Let's see, it says two cups. So I'm gonna say, eyeball it, one, two. These containers are like five ounces. You'll definitely have enough if you buy one of those. That said, about using arugula raw, I like it cooked too. I think people only think of baby arugula, especially as something you can eat in salad, but you can toss it in pasta raw when the pasta was warm and it will wilt like this and you have like instant veggie pasta. So just to review, those clamshells say that the greens are washed. But I had a teacher in culinary school who said once, sort of cryptically, he's like, I've seen what they wash those in. I think his point was like, they wash a lot of greens, so it's not always like a fresh batch of water when they're washing it. So if you're in a rush, me too, I will just throw it in. If you have a little bit of extra time, like give it a wash, just be safe. So remember, it's in my salad spinner. I'm filling that up with cold water. <coughs> Pardon me, I have a little tickle. It won't go away. Give it a little zhuzh. We're going to let any silt uh, and sand fall to the bottom. There's really none in there because it's out of this clamshell, but just we're doing preventative wash. We're going to pull the basket up, let anything fall to the bottom, use the water to water our plants, spin it dry, ready to go. Make sense? Good. Okay. I'm going to let that settle though. That's one of the key moments when you're washing greens is to give it time so any dirt or sand that's in there has time to settle to the bottom. Make sense? Yes. <coughs> I'm sorry guys about this cup. Fresh mozzarella, you can often find it salted or unsalted. I'm not sure why you would choose unsalted. I can't think of a case where I would want unsalted mozzarella unless you really need to like cut salt from your diet but salted will have way more flavor. Um, fresh mozzarella. I prefer the texture in this application. Um, pressed mozzarella, which is like, like polio. You'll, it, it looks like it's kind of in the same package, but that's pressed. Um, 
I prefer that often like on pizzas because fresh mozzarella, it's wet. So unless you are um, really cranking your oven and you've got really good high heat, um, pressed mozzarella is often better because sometimes the, the fresh stuff will water out on whatever else you're cooking. So you either have to cook something for a little bit longer or just like a lot hotter. Um, that's my, those are my feelings on mozzarella. Any questions, mozzarella or otherwise? Hi, Sari. I should, hi, Sari. No, I don't need to say it to Jerry. Um, okay, get back to class. Just kidding. Everything's different. Um, okay, this is not a big deal. You could tear it, you could slice it. I'm just going to slice it. Same thing. When you're cooking, especially something where, like, this is it, this isn't getting cooked again, <coughs> just consider is this easy to eat? And that's what, what we mean when we say bite sized pieces. Like, can I bite into this and chew like a grown up and have a conversation? Yes. No? Then, like, let's rethink the size that we're cutting this into. Now, you can see I'm not seeing, I'm not looking. This is six ounces. Again, I wouldn't necessarily look. But we're going to start here. If I need more mozz, I'll slice more. Remember, recipes, while this will work, are like a jumping off point. Feel free to kind of wiggle around when you get in there. That said, I don't want to get emails from you saying like, I swapped the chicken for anchovies and I used spinach instead of arugula and I baked it at 350 and it didn't work. That doesn't count, you made something else. So if you followed the directions as they're written and it still doesn't work, let me know. But otherwise, you made your own recipe and maybe you should tweak it, okay? That only happens sometimes. Okay, things are happening. We've got some nice color. And this is, oh, now this is we need another minute. I'm gonna say we probably need a little bit longer than that. That is probably because this dough is different than the dough we used here. So that's another thing you wanna keep in mind is things may vary. Your timing, we give you a range for a reason. So this is 12 to 15 minutes. I set it for 12, we might need to add three, okay? No big deal. Or maybe five. Okay, I got my chicken, mozz. Let's get our arugula. See, I lifted it out. Mm, mozzarella is so good. And you know what fresh mozzarella feels like? Tofu. So you could take this in a different direction and use some tofu in place if you were going vegan. Um, you know what I really like are those baked tofu squares. I think they've got a lot of flavor. I like the texture. Angry timer. OK, let's add, oop. We'll add three more men and keep it going. You see how sort of like fast and easy this is? I'm like slowing it down because those aren't ready yet. Arugula, ready? into my chicken. Oh, here's another thing. If you didn't want to do the pesto, you could use your favorite vinaigrette. Jerry, drop the link to our favorite vinaigrette or your favorite bottle dressing. I'll, I'll allow it on this shortcut night. Okay, what else do I put in here? We made the pesto, we tossed it with the chicken and the arugula, and that's it. You could add a bean if you wanted to bulk it up. Um, what other things? I Like I said, tin fish tuna would be good in place of the chicken. Something to look for in pesto is this like bright green vibrant color. Now, oftentimes it means they've added citric acid, which is a preservative, citric acid, get it? It's like, you know, citrus. Um, I don't find that it affects flavor too much, although that my baby does get a little bit of a rash when she eats this one particular hummus that has citric acid in it. Of course, she likes it more than the hummus I make myself, but we'll figure that out. Um, okay, so this recipe, the part of the recipe that was for the pesto, it's like a, two cups of herbs, some garlic, and some olive oil. So I don't necessarily know how much 
that yields in my memory. So there's another good rule. You can always add more. You can't really take it out. Okay, so I'm going to start with like this nice spoonful. We'll give this a toss, maybe a little more. And if I have to add more, great. So I'm just going to give this a toss. And this doesn't need to be anything but delicious. Like it doesn't need to stick to anything um, because the sandwich is going to be, the bread's going to be folded over. So you just want it to be moist. I would encourage you to give it a taste as always once it gets nice and incorporated to see like, does this taste good? If it does, great. If it tastes a little bland, add another spoonful of pesto. If it seems like plenty wet but still a little bland, add a little bit of salt. Pestos, like all packaged goods, will vary depending on brand and like depending where you live. So give it a taste and just because it worked like this one time that you made it when you were visiting your mom in Illinois, it might need like a little zhuzhing once you're back home in New York or wherever. Okay, let's try. It's pretty good. I love pesto. So I could always use a little more, which I'll, did, which I'll add, but I added a pinch of salt. We'll do a little bit of pepper. These smell close to done. Let's see. Really good. This guy, I'd say the front guy is done. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these out in batches. Tongs. This is a good time for them. So I'm going to take this guy. Ooh, nice. Okay. Maybe these guys are all done. Yeah, they're all done. Pretty dark on the bottom, but that's okay. We call it French. Now, I would encourage you to probably take that sheet out and put it on the top of the stove, but I get nervous around hot sheet tray. Okay, we are going to now cover these with a damp, very lightly damp towel, and they're gonna steam. Now. You could just pile this mixture on top of these and like knife and fork pizza style. But the idea is that we create some steam in here. This is the same if you are reheating tortillas and they tell you to wrap it in a warm towel. This is why. So they don't crack when we fold them. And if they do, it's okay. And it's not a big deal. Okay, I'm going to give this a little more pesto. Do you have a question? Question. Ooh, good question. Would it make sense to add marinated tomatoes or other dried fruits? Dried fruits, interesting um, idea, but I like it. I really love that kind of like Italian agro dolce thing, that sweet and sour, so if you did want to add dried fruit, what I might do is soak whatever it was, let's say golden raisins in a little red wine vinegar, pop it in the microwave for like a minute, and that will help the raisins plump up. So then you get the sweet and sour bite throughout. That's actually a really good idea. Marinated tomatoes, also yum. Um, I know that sun-dried tomatoes are sort of controversial, but, or, or not controversial, polarizing. I really like them, but those would be good in here. Um, even if you wanted to substitute the fresh mozzarella for a little marinated bocconcini, that would be yum too. Jerry, other questions? Um, you don't ask mandarin oranges. Mandarin oranges, another interesting addition. What I might do is skip the pesto if I were putting mandarin oranges in here. But guys, like the pizza dough is your oyster. Do with it what you like um, and have fun with it. Try mandarin oranges or maybe add mandarin oranges to like one, take a bite, everyone can share. Do you like it? Great, add them in. So that's the other thing, like adding the pesto a little bit at a time. Yeah, you could pick out a bunch of mandarin oranges, but that would be annoying. So try some, if you like it, great, go for it. Um, if not, pull back. I'm hoping this is working. And if not, we'll just have like flatbreads and it'll be great. So but they're getting kind of pliable. It's working. I have a question. Jerry has a question. Because they're pretty black in the bottom. Would, uh, is the pizza still worth it or is it too sweet? 
Jerry asks, is the pizza stone worth it? You mean instead of the sheet? Yeah, or just buy one for yourself. Depends. If you make a lot of pizza, um, I like a pizza stone. I find them to be like kind of heavy and annoying. Um, just to like get in and out and then it's hot and it's sitting there. I often like leave it in the oven and want to let it cool and then I forget and then I preheated the oven again so it just lives in there. So the benefit of the pizza stone is that it's thicker. And I find it is, it provides like a more gentle heat. Like metal gets hotter. So you can get some of that like darker bottom, but like I'm not, I'm not mad at that. Um, you guys know what I think, that you guys generally underbake your pastry. It's not your fault. You're just cooking to the time and not the indicator. Um, so don't be afraid to add a few more minutes uh, and keep it going. Now, I will say what could have happened is we were preheating that sheet. It was on the bottom rack. Um, generally a good idea, especially we've talked about pies and pie crust, always bake on the bottom rack. That's going to help ensure crispy crust, no soggy bottoms, right? So um, next time I made these, I would maybe put my sheet to preheat on the middle rack. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, let's try to go for it. But like, see how pliable? So like, that's not really going to break. I think if we let it go further, that would be even better. But I'll do a couple at a time. Just, we're just going to make it. Now, if you wanted to, you could like pop these back in the oven, melt the cheese on top, and then pile this on. I mean, like, how good does this look? Guys, I was like kind of dilly-dallying, and this t took definitely less than 30 minutes. A little bit of mozz, get that chicken back in there. Any other questions? No, it looks really lovely. Are you, I think, I think you guys should make this. <laughs> it's so easy, and it's, so yum. And remember, if like this is weird to you, like if you're sort of intimidated by this, just do this part. That's the other thing about recipes is you don't always have to um, use every single part of it. This is cute. I wish I had a toothpick. But maybe I'll just put uh, this heavy spoon on it to make it stick. Um, and like you could just make the pizza dough flatbread part and stuff it with whatever you want. So even if you just did tomato sauce and fresh mozzarella, like that would be cool. Um, you know, different greens, you could do wilted kale or mustard greens. Jerry, ah, what a hero. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. So this would be a nice way to present it. Just remember to tell whoever you're feeding to be careful that there's a toothpick in there. What do you think? So easy? Yum. So guys, this has been a five ingredient chicken pesto flatbread sandwich. I hope you make these tonight, sometime soon, this weekend. But this is a good, you know, uh, way to get the rest of the fam involved. Someone could pick the chicken. Someone could even just tear the mozzarella if you didn't want to give them a knife. There's a lot for the rest of the family to do. And isn't that the whole idea? Ask for, ask for help. That's you know advice I'm giving myself. Accept help when offered. We got our chicken. We got our mats. We fold it. Uh. Nice. Let's stab it. And that, my friends, is a 30-minute meal. <gasps> Guys, stick around. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. What are we making? Halloween treats? I think I'm going to make something special for Halloween in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, just cook. I don't care what you cook. Make something for your fam. Make something for yourself. Um, but feel good about it. It's, it's, uh, once you get in the habit of cooking for yourself, I think you're really going to love the way it makes you feel about the end of the day or the middle of the day. OK, have a great week. We're going to eat these chicken. Uh, oh, this is a, a powerful crust. We're going to eat these sandwiches. And we'll see you right back here at Real Simple Cooking School very soon. Bye.